Hello, good evening, welcome. Why do we have no sound from the game? There we go, that's much better. Some settings were wrong. <laughs> Always a great start to these live streams. <laughs> I'm so professional at this. <laughs> How y'all doing? Thank you for the four months. I think it's pronounced like Yanto, if I remember correctly. Ah, uh, sorry, I kind of forgot. I hope I got that somewhat correct. Good evening, Crazy Baboon, Karan Drakis, BP Smith, Guns for Guns, everyone else. I got it. Good. Um, I don't know the rest of your name, though. Only the first five letters. <laughs> but that's good enough. <laughs> I mean, I would still pronounce this E N two, like E N two, because I, you know, capital uh, I instead of an L, you would uh, assume. E N two Y Dragogog, but that's. Not at all correct, because I don't... I don't Welsh. <laughs> um, how you doing? Welcome. I'm excited for tonight's stream, because it's been a week. Because um, I cancelled uh, Sunday stream. Which is because uh, I had my booster on uh, Saturday for the Corona vaccine. And I basically got the same reaction as I got for my first dose of the vaccine. Which... Was not getting ill, but just getting extremely tired. So, uh, 
Yeah, no stream. <laughs> I was way too tired for that, even halfway uh, the afternoon already. <laughs> Let alone in the evening. Almost had meeting about continuing my contract at work. My con what do you mean, almost had a meeting about it? I mean, are you going to have it soon? Or did you almost have it, but turns out you're not going to have a meeting at all? It's either of the two. <laughs> Hang on. Are there... Are you guys still there? Because usually there are a lot more comments. Okay, there are still. Uh, you guys are still there. I thought something was wrong uh, for some reason. As didn't as Discord uh, sometimes does. Discord, Twitch. I mean, Discord also does weird things sometimes. She cancelled five minutes before. Now next week. Ah, so it is the almost, as in you almost had it, but you didn't. I mean, it'll still happen, and on a global scale and on a, like a geological time scale, a week from now is pretty almost. Hey, one of these mics, how you doing? So, um, let's get started, shall we? Um, this is not where Crazy Castle is, this is where Crazy Castle is. Ooh, that's, uh... Quiet castle for now. Let's uh, do something about that, shall we? Like that and that. I'm gonna do that. And yeah, we're gonna use this path. And boom. Nice. I got some stuff for 70% off regular price. And the store is closing in four days. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay, so first thing you always need to do in Crazy Castle is yep, dip, 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 dip. Because um, you need that ATM and it's going to take a year. Because uh, Crazy Castle is stupid, but you know. We got to work around that. What I'm also going to do today, or technically what I'm not going to do today, I'm not going to delete any of the path or the scenery. Maybe if I'll build through it, like delete one or two pieces, but not to delete everything at the start, you know? Hey, thank you for the 8 months slime. Welcome, as well. Can't watch tonight, but have a great stream. Well, thank you. Can we have the RCT channel point rewards? Oh, yeah, I completely forgot to swap those. Apologies. Let me uh, do that while you listen to some beautiful music. Let's see. Not one on Cillian, Drown a Ghast. Color a ride. Name a ride. Name the park. Pick a coaster type. Um, and fire staff. There we go. That should be it. Thank you for the seven months Hemi. And the five months Claude Boy. I appreciate you. The first one. Bye. All right. CS line. And we got a high train going on. That's pretty good already. Okay. Guest six. I guess you're going to die. Bad luck for you, buddy. That's... Not my fault. I am forced by my viewers. <laughs> oh, thank you for the 10 months, Prater. You guys are on a roll. Found out that you are not the only RCT streamer that does something against the mole people. Wait, who else does? I know Cody doesn't. But... Who else? Uh, Brian? I don't know. I don't really know many other RCT streamers. Because there are a lot of people that, you know, that I rate and stuff who stream RCT sometimes. There are very few people who exclusively or almost exclusively, like me, stream Rollercoaster Tycoon. Which is a bit of a shame. We could use more. Oh, we got quite a good coaster selection at the start, actually. Yeah, I like that. Name the park. Alright. Any name you want. Well, you know, within common sense restrictions, obviously. Have you played any of the mods that add extra rights to RCT2? I've... I mean, I have access to the hybrid and uh, single rail coaster, if that's what you mean. They're pretty good. Uh, don't really build them very often, but I have every now and then, and yet yeah, they're nice. 
Let's see, can I go there? I can. Wonderful. Carefully or seerfully castle. Cut in a castle. I know that carefully, whatever that, how you pronounce it. I know that that's a village or city in Wales. At least I hope it's true. Otherwise, uh, I didn't know that. <laughs> Um, but I believe that's true anyway. <laughs> Carefully. Ah. So, if you want to hear me struggle pronounce words, go Welsh. <laughs> One day I hope to actually successfully design a coaster from scratch that doesn't break a guest's necks. I mean, it's not difficult. Um, I'm gonna be straight with you here. If you... Just take a looping coaster, make it like a 15 meter drop, and you bank all your turns. It's impossible to make it too intense. That's... It's like, it's not super difficult. You can do it. One day I'll learn Welsh. Well, I won't. <laughs> Way too much effort. I always forget we don't have a photo section on this. All my coasters end up going Mach 20 on small turns. Well, make your initial drop smaller. Ooh, that's ugly. Let's uh, put it there. Yeah, I need to restrain myself from absurd drops. I never really had that issue that I always wanted absurd drops. Well, issue. It's not really an issue, but... I suppose it is if you want to build good coasters. Um, I sometimes did it for the hell of it. You know, building extreme coasters, but not whenever I wanted to build normal coasters. Oh, hey, we got a raid. Welcome, Electro Lama and uh, the two others. Don't exactly know who, but welcome. How you doing? Were you also streaming RCT? I know you. I, I don't know if you exclusively stream RCT, but I do you know you play this game. Because, you know, I've seen you a lot, a lot of communities. Thank you for the follow, uh, Galigia. I'm just kind of worried about not able to complete the track at the same time. Then just build the track shorter. Like this, this junior coaster. It goes up how many meters? Let's see, uh, right tracks. It goes up 12 meters. That's not very much. There's not even two normal banked turns. And... The track is short. You were doing a Reddit challenge. Build a 7 plus excitement coaster as fast as possible. Got under 20 seconds. Ooh. This seem, that seems like some kind of obscure speed gun, speed run category or something like that. How would you approach that? I think I know. Build a looping coaster. And make it do a lot of... Uh, a lot of laps with a loop. Like six laps and then you'll be fine. Something like that. Make it launched. Um, or build, um, build a thingamajing, air powered coaster. Custom. Yeah, custom. Um, of course custom. It's not like, you know, do this, build. Let's see. Which is a nice big one. I don't know. This one. And then test it and fast forward. That doesn't count. Um, the same, you can't use that in speedruns either. Okay, let's first fix this little bit of path. I'm gonna delete some path in the middle here and kind of make it like a shopping district. I don't know if shopping districts, I don't think they're really advantageous, but they're nice. In my defense, my last design, I was barely over on a coaster that went through its own loop. Building coasters through its own loop is always fun. Especially if they're interlocking loops. By the way, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, last Thursday's video, which is almost a week ago now. Usually I ask that on the Sunday, but obviously there was no stream this time. Um, but I hope you liked it. I thought it was pretty interesting to dig into the uh, stats of the hardline and look for exactly why it is bad. Because I always wondered, like, it's a meme that it's bad, and it is bad. That's, you know, 
no question about it. But I always wondered how it came to be that it is so bad. Because it's quite weird if you think about it. And then, I, you know, if the video was just as, you know, just as much a learning curve for me as it was for you. Because I had to do all the research because I didn't know either. Now, of course, I already knew how the code worked, so it was a little bit easier. Um, but yeah, I found it really interesting that basically in every single place, <laughs> the hardline is getting screwed. Double pathway. I didn't build it, but I'll keep it. I'm too lazy to remove it. Yeah, it's a good deep dive into the game mechanics with a simple example. Yeah, because, you know, it's learning how uh, how the Heartline got such terrible stats. Which is, of course, very interesting. Um, and, you know, good for the meme and stuff. But it's also teaching you about, for example, that rides have base stats. It's like Pokemon. <laughs> and a lot of other things that... Um, the you know the scenery bonus how that works and you know part of it at least and stuff like that i hope i explained it well i think i did anyway because i don't really ever get comments about people saying that i didn't explain it well so then i assume i did well or people just are too nice to say Although I do sometimes get comments about uh, a thing that I didn't include. That's the only negative feedback I get. Which it's good that I get it. But it's negative feedback if it's criticism. Um, uh, which is very uh, valid. Well sometimes it isn't. Well it's only still valid. But sometimes I did not include a certain thing on purpose. Because I thought it didn't really fit the pace of the video and stuff. What did Chris Sawyer have against it and the hypercoaster? Well, the hypercoaster isn't as terrible. Like, the hypercoaster is not bad. It's just bad compared to superior options that are basically the same coaster, just better. That's the problem with the hypercoaster. It doesn't really have its own place because it's there are other coasters that are the same but just better. The hardline is just weird. Live stream before I get on the ice later. What kind of ice? I mean, what kind of sport? Ice hockey? Speed skating? Uh, figure skating? Short track? Hey, thank you for the 16 months, Max. That's a power of two. I like powers of two. And welcome to the live stream. The cold kind of ice. Well, you do have, like, the saying, icy hot. So you can sort of have, like, hot ice. No? Well, I think you can. This is also very hot ice. If you have ice in the shape of a beautiful woman or a beautiful man, you also have hot ice. You're a hockey coach at a college in New England. Ah. Not good enough at skating to be a speed skater. It's funny that you say that, because one of the best female speed skaters ever, Cindy Clausen, was, I believe, not good enough at hockey to be an ice hockeyer. And then she switched to speed skating. And then she won everything for about a year. I love the emphasis on speed skating. I mean, it is my favorite sport to watch. Can't really do it myself. <laughs> That's a great quote. Technically, um, any solid is the ice of its specific material. No, it's the solid of its specific material. Like, ice is just a name for frozen water. Um, what shall we build here? How about Crooked Heist? No, hang on. I should do that there. Perfect. 
Do salmon pink t-shirts. Do we even have a t-shirt stall? We do. I can do that. Slime isn't here. Now we got all salmon pink. No, let's not do that. Ice is scientifically a rock, which makes water lava, and we are lava monsters. I mean, with that kind of um, reasoning, you can justify a lot of weird things. <laughs> if you want. Let's do salmon pink shirts, because then, then we have naked people. Which is very hot and sexy. <laughs> also salmon pink hats. Then they have weirdly shaped hats. Weird, weirdly shaped heads, is what I mean. Air is technically a fluid. No, it isn't. It's a gas. The tone of this stream has been set. I mean, in five minutes, all have forgotten about that when I'm building a coaster or whatever. Can you make a one tile wide, super long straight maze with just one hedge in the middle? To make sure the guests cannot get lost and call it the corridor. Sure. Oh, pick a coast type for me to build. We'll do that first. Whichever one do you want, the Arsenal. Oh, fluids are plasma, gas and liquid. Oh, of course. A oh, woody. I can do a woody. Let's see. Oh, I'm out of money. I was out of money and I immediately clicked on cheat. I didn't want to do cheat. I wanted to do, you know, this. It's called a loan. <laughs> it was a bit of an unfortunate misclick. How much entry do you get with a log flume? I mean, I charge 10, 20. Or do you mean how many soft guest cap? That I don't know by heart. But uh, 50 or so probably. And the last one. There you go. It's a lot of advertisements. That'll be nice. And let's go Woody. Ooh, let's not go that tall. You know, when you're building a roller coaster, um, it's a very good practice. Okay, so this is 9 meters. I'm now on 28 and a half. That's a 19 and a half meter drop, which means two steep pieces. And now I'm, as long as I don't add a second chain lift, which I won't, I'm limited to whatever speed I have from this. And not only are you limiting yourself in the intensity now and the speed, as long as you bank all your turns, you cannot get excessive lateral Gs now because uh, the speeds simply aren't high enough for that. But you're also limiting yourself in cost. If you're, if you're very good at unintentionally building way too expensive coasters, then... Make a small first drop. That limits yourself really nicely in what in matter of what you can do. What did you think of the hostage thing in the Apple store? I didn't really follow it. I don't really have much opinions about it. I know that there was a hostage situation and think it was in Amsterdam, right? Um and I believe no one got injured. Well except uh <laughs> Except the one who took the hostages because he got uh, hit by a car to stop him. And other than that, I don't know much about it. So, eh, don't, don't really have any opinion. Now I'm uh, gonna build from this side. Let's see. Does this work? No, that's... Oh, hang on, that, that can totally work. That can totally work. If we go down here... That's up. No, that won't fit. Darn it.
Okay, then we're just gonna do... Uh, nope, that one. Um, actually, that will fit. Why would the Apple Store have 200 million in crypto ready for transfer? Yeah, that doesn't really work either. I mean, you said what was the guy thinking? The guy was mentally deranged or whatever, how you, however you want to call it. He clearly wasn't in his right mind. If you do something like that. And then you also don't make reasonable demands because you're not thinking straight. Yep. And open. I'm now tempted to build an RCT2 Apple store with a no exit sign. I mean, the you now exit sign is not really the <laughs> the the big thing about that. This is uh, building the Apple Store is going to be a lot of effort. All right, here we have a wooden coaster, nicely between these two paths. Let's build a path through it actually to make for a bit more connections. Oh, there's already one. Never mind. Didn't couldn't see that. That's pretty good actually. But let's build another one. Just because we can. There we go. And the guest numbers are rising steadily. Because, well, not really steadily. Quite fast, actually. Because advertisements. Path bonus. Oh, yeah, that too. Well, not head chopper, actually. Should have been one more to the right for that. Uh, which it isn't. Okay, let's build that maze. Do we have a maze? We do. Of course we do. Let's see, where can I nicely... Ooh, I can do that here. The Corridor. Corridor Digital. Uh, that's a YouTube channel that I don't really follow. And that's it. That's the Corridor. Name a ride of your choice. Ooh, go ahead. Uh, the corridor. Wow, nice woody shame no camera. You mean no photo section? We don't really have place for it, so... No, no photo section today. What are the EIN of the woody? 603-727-396. Name the maze... I'm no, I'm not gonna try to pronounce that, but I can name it that. Uh, that and the there we go. No, I did that the wrong thing. Yes. Yeah. Uh, ah, damn it. Stupid slash. There we go. Scoil na dry dryokta. That's. That's horrible. <laughs> Roughly skull nadrikta. That's totally different than how it's written. But that's Irish for you. And that's also Welsh for you. Both are terrible. Try Greek. Yeah, anything that doesn't have the Latin script is of course going to be even worse. Because, you know, Cyrillic or Greek or, you know, Japanese or whatever. I'm not even going to know how to pronounce it. And Cyrillic and Greek can look sometimes slightly like Latin characters. Then you get to the Asian languages like uh, Khmer and Japanese and Burmese and all that kind of stuff. And it's like nothing like anything I'm used to. So that's... That's all... That, like that's not even going to be terrible because that's me having not a clue. A Japanese can be Romanized easily, that's true. Cyrillic is a combination of Latin and Greek with their own stuff thrown in, yeah. I've had a few times where in Geogas I saw a sign Cyrillic, I was confident it was Gre uh, Greek. Because it has some Greek letters. 
Greek is quite easy. No, it isn't. I mean, being able to read Greek might not be very difficult to be able to pronounce the words, but actually learning Greek? That's learning a full language. That's never easy. Thank you for the follow. Akmichi, Gander, Ditto Milk, and Yanni Clash. Easier than Latin. Yeah, but that's also a language. You know, that's like saying that, um, that, I, I don't know, being a world class soccer player is easier than being a world class, uh, I don't know, triathlete. Like, maybe, but both are insanely difficult. I've never been able to learn more than one language. Well, I have. Obviously. Because <laughs> uh, English is not my native tongue. Believe it or not, because I am perfectly accentless. Uh, <laughs> not really, but uh, close enough. Well, obviously, I speak Dutch and English. Um, I don't speak French. Well, a few words here and there. Hang on, what did I just do? Uh, um... And same with German. I don't really speak it, but a few words. Um, but yeah, I only really speak two languages. Which is a bit of a shame. It would be nice to speak more, but honestly, I'm probably not going to be able to put the effort in. Especially, you know, if I would move to a country, obviously I would learn the language eventually. But if the only thing I'm going to do in countries is go on vacation... And they all speak pretty much perfect English or good enough English for tourists, then there's no incentive for me to learn their languages. You speak a little Greek, pretty good Spanish, decent German, very basic Dutch, Mandarin, and Irish Gaelic. So, how many languages do you speak? If someone asks you, and they ask you, how many languages do you speak? Um. What would you say? Because, um, you know, there are one, two, three, four, five, six. You mentioned six different languages in that post, but obviously you don't speak six languages. Because if, you know, speaking one word from a language counts, then I speak a whole lot of languages. <laughs> and the reason I ask that is because there was a map... Um, that's been posted on Reddit a few times, and then it that the map was about um, how many languages on average people speak in every European country, and the Netherlands had an average of um, 3.2, which is bullshit. The average Dutch person does not speak 3.2 languages. Like, most people speak um, Dutch and English, of course. There are a few people who only really speak Dutch. Um, and there are a few people who also speak Frisian. Um, and there are a few, you know, all the Turkish people speak Turkish. And, you know, the Moroccans speak Moroccan almost always and stuff like that. But, you know, if you... Add one extra language to all the, you know, let's assume everyone speaks English and Dutch. And then quite a few people speak either German or French or um, Moroccan or Turkish or Frisian. Then that's still only three. To get an average of 3.2, quite a lot of people would need to speak four or five languages like my entire um, at least my immediate family only speaks two languages um, Dutch and English but all my friends as far as I know only speak two languages Dutch and English and you know a little bit of French a little bit of German but that doesn't count as speaking Uh, thank you for the four months, Bridget Barbie. I appreciate that. And color right of your choice by Crazy Baboon. Go ahead. Junior coaster green and black. Alright. 
Honestly, learning English when it's not your native language is an achievement if you ask me. It's not very difficult for a Dutch person. Um, of you, yeah, some people are terrible at languages, absolutely terrible. They will have great difficulty with it, of course. But the reason that English is not very difficult is that it's everywhere in the Netherlands. Like, we stop dubbing movies and go to sub, you know, subs not dubs, at like around eight or nine years old. That's also when you start learning English in primary school. Um, and it's, it's everywhere. So, it's easy to pick up. And all the internet, like, of course, there's a huge Dutch community on the internet. But a lot of the internet is in English. And you just, you just watch it, because, I don't know, that, that's how it works. Yeah, and Dutch and English are also quite close to each other in terms of... Uh, is that a lag spike? That was a big lag spike. Reminds me to save. Crazy Castle stream 2022. Is it the... I think this is the first one in 2022. There we go. I mean, yeah, some people know quite a lot of languages, but I find an average of 3.2 quite hard to believe. It's very high. And I think a lot of Dutch people are like, yeah, I can, I can totally speak German. And then they, you know, they can ask their way around and can, you know, know a few things like they know what banana is in German and that's it. And then I'm like, no, you don't speak German. That, that doesn't count. Uh, let's build an observation tower. And after that, I'll color the ferris wheels. Let's build it. Could build it there, but I can't build the entrance and the exit. Let's go there. That's a good spot. The average American speaks 0.5 languages. Nice meme. I don't... I wonder, because it's a meme that Americans are stupid. I wonder how many people actually believe that. Because obviously it's not true. <laughs> but I wonder how many people actually believe it. Hello from Vienna and all RCT fans. Hello much, I like your YouTube channel. Well, thank you. And hello back to Vienna. You're American and I believe it. I mean, Americans aren't stupid. It's maybe they're uneducated, but that's not their fault. I've said this before on stream and I'll stick to it. With languages, it's less that Americans are stupid and more that they don't travel outside of the US as much. I don't believe though that the average English person speaks much more than one language either. Except all, you know, the immigrants of course do, but if you're, you know, born and raised British, you know, as British as can be, then there's not all that much need for you to learn a second language. Come on, there we go. Only the loudest Americans are dumb, but as an American myself, there are a lot of intelligent ones. They are just quiet about issues and stuff. Yeah, you, say, you, see, you see that as well in the Netherlands. The loudest ones are the stupidest ones. Not always, there are also loud, intelligent people, of course. But often the stupidest ones are the loudest ones. Thank you for the follow, big Aussie. At? Hang on, at. Were you the guy from Vienna? This is a tent for Austria. Um, I can't find that comment. But it might be. Or is it that far up? Oh yeah, I found it. I was right. Pretty cool. 
I think the silent majority is ubiquitous. Yeah. It's a lot... You know, not to go... I don't want to go into depth in certain politics, but... There's a lot of... Um, in every country, of politics is currently a hotly debated topic. On the internet, mostly. Most people, in their daily lives... Just want to get on with it. You know, just want to... Live their life. Most people don't care to have hotly, you know, debate about politics in their everyday life. Most people just want to go to work, have an, at least an okay day at work, and, you know, then go home to their spouse or to their home or to their children or whatever. And then, you know, have a nice dinner and then have a nice evening where you either relax or do something productive or whatever. That, you know, go see friends or play a game. Most people like the boring. It's not, nah, it's not boring, but some sort of uneventful. Maybe the better word. At least that's what I like. Yes, damsel, we have double parts. Drown 666. All right. Six, six, six. We're gonna drown the devil. <laughs> also, one thing that I disagree with is, you know, some people that either, you know, spout some political stuff that you violently disagree with. Um, and that may, you know, border on very dangerous stuff. You know, Geert Wilders, you know, the stuff he says, for example. There, those people are not always stupid, the people who also who follow those kind of politicians. To just call them stupid and stuff like that isn't really helpful. Because it's often environments in which people are raised and stuff like that, you know... The indoctrinated by their parents, you could say. This doesn't really help to just paint them as stupid. Yeah, most people just want to work and go home to their kids. Yeah, I don't have kids. <laughs> Thank God. Uh, hey, Marcel, just started playing RTC again after a long hiatus with my six-year-old son. What's the biggest difference between RST1 and RST2? Well, the biggest difference between 1 and 2 is gen general improvement to gameplay. Hey, thank you for the one year now, Cody. Oh, and thank you for the three months as well, Nicholas. Appreciate you both. Um, RCT2 basically uses gameplay improvements. Um, you can make buildings like this one with shift and control. Um, you know, you can place stuff in the air, which wasn't possible in one. You get a lot more um, different ride types. Um, the scenarios are definitely worse in two, which is unfortunate. Um, let's see. What else is there? Um, yeah, it's basically, basically gameplay improvements and stuff. And then open RCT2, which is sort of a mod like for RCT2, which basically just improves the game again. Just a lot of quality of life features, like speed up. Up to 128 times, which is very useful. Although you won't really need that in scenario play, the very fast speed up. But if you need to wait a while and just you know speed it up by times two or times four, it's quite useful. But the best is, you know, RCT2 plus open RCT2. If you have a tablet or some kind of mobile device, RCT Classic. It's very good. It's basically an amalgamation of RCT1 and 2 based on the gameplay of 2. Um, with a mobile designed UI and it's really good. Oh yeah, the cash machine is the major improvement in 2. Except in this scenario, where we still don't have it. Even though we've been going ham on researching on stalls. The entire time. I'm 
pretty sure that Rollercoaster Tycoon 2 plus Open Rollercoaster Tycoon 2 can do fine on Mac. Um, Juan. It's a bit more involved getting it working, I believe, but it's possible. Let's see. Oh, we don't have photo section on this either. Well, we do have brakes, luckily. And there, and there. Which is better, added attractions or loopy landscapes? I don't know which, like, I don't know which scenarios are from which back. And I also don't know which back adds which right, so I have no idea. If you add any, could any, could add any kind of food stall to RCT, what would you add? Uh, pasta. Probably, I don't know. Now, Olibola. Olibola, definitely. If you don't know what they are, Look them up. Holy baller. Good luck with the spelling. <laughs> there you go. Max provided the spelling for you. Warme stroop wafels. Yeah, but nothing is as good as an holy baller kraam. Fish and chips. Are you British? <laughs> All right, here we got a nice wild mouse coaster. I hope it doesn't get... I'm always a bit scared that my wild mouse coaster got excessive Gs, because I can't hide my lack of proper speed manage management with banked turns. I have to actually do proper speed management. But we seem to be good. I resumed working on the new objective system. Oh yeah, you are working on that. I'm looking forward to uh, uh, fiddling around with it once it's finished. Okay, let's see what the stats are. Fish and chips are delicious. Well, I'm not really a fan of fish. Also, I, let me ask this. Is vinegar on chips a real thing? Because if so... What the hell? Like... Like... Like, what? Vinegar is... Vinegar is something you put, like, a little bit through a salad or something to give it a big bit of... bit taste. You know, a bit of sour... You know, a little bit. Oh, it's not the vinegar we use in the Netherlands. It's... So, it's different. It's... it's it's malt vinegar. I don't know what malt vinegar is. Tom Scott did a video on it. Yeah, but I still assumed it was our vinegar. <laughs> it's, a bit of, it's like when Americans say that mayo, mayonnaise, is sour or whatever. I think I've heard that. But their mayonnaise is very different from our mayonnaise. Vinegar tastes sweet and tangy to me. I, I do like vinegar, like a little bit through a salad or something like that. But our vinegar on fries would be disgusting. <laughs> well, probably would be at least someone in the world who would like it. Thank you for the follow, Yerin01. Belgian mayo. Is, is Belgian mayo different than Dutch mayo? Well, it was pretty much the same. In some countries, they don't have Marmite. I don't think we have Marmite here. I mean, we have it here, probably, but it's not a thing here. It's like some niche thing that you, that some weird people buy and eat, I suppose. But it's not a standard thing like, I don't know, like peanut butter or whatever. Best Dutch contribution to the world after meal. Thank you. Is Pinder sauce. It's Pinda sauce. Um, A instead of ER. Um, well, sauce, you know, it's fine. Or peanut sauce, technically. Um, and sauce is um, S A U S. I have to Google the Dutch way of making mayo. Hang on. Making mayo? Do you, do you just want to make Dutch mayo? Or do Americans typically make their own mayo? 
You don't make mayo here, we just buy it in stores. Yogurt mayonnaise is disgusting. Is is yogurt mayonnaise the mayonnaise we use or is that still something different? I'm I don't know a lot about all those different food stuffs. You don't make your own mayo. No, I don't. Mayo in America is just egg, lemon, and oil. Pretty sure the Dutch mayo has some more ingredients than that. I'm, I'm learning a lot about foreign um, foodstuffs here. Which is quite interesting. I'm still disgusted by fries and vinegar. Even though I know now it's not the same vinegar. But I only know one type of vinegar. And that on fries is disgusting. So it will always have that association for me. Honestly, mayo is disgusting the more you know about it. What do you mean? I don't care what my food is made of, as long as it's nice. Yeah, it's like a clear acidic liquid over here. Yeah, you don't want that on your fries. You can use any acid. Lemon is what I use. Ah. Okay. Uh, let's see, we have all the ghosts. No, we only have four of the ghosts used. But I want to research more, but first we need to research the damn ATM. Which rhymes. Let's do some more advertising. I don't mind knowing what's in my mayo, I just don't want to know what my frikadelle is made of. I mean, the frikadelle is just made of leftover meat. You know, it could be horse legs and cow arse and pig, uh, I don't know, leg. It's basically just leftover meat and it's delicious. Yeah, nothing against horse meat. I mean, I included it casually. How much are you making a month? Uh, close to 10k, or well, more than 10k this month actually, that's pretty good. Let's uh, build some more stalls. But not an ATM yet, because we don't have it yet! It's taking frustratingly long. As usual. Let's do dark pink. You know, apparently there's a company that makes chips flavored after foods that are illegal in the US. Why would that be illegal? We have some pretty weird flavors in the Netherlands with chips. We had like cucumber flavored, uh, patatioppi sauce, which is actually pretty damn good. I kind of just want to uh, get that after the stream, but stores are closed. So if I do it, I have to, have to wait until tomorrow. You subscribed and didn't get a pop-up message. Oh, I did say your... I did thank you, though, Nicolas, but thank you again. And maybe it was because you just... I think you subscribed, like, almost the exact same moment as Cody, maybe? I think Cody did get a pop-up message. I did see it. I don't really pay attention to it, but I did see one uh, during the intro when uh, Yanto subscribed. So I know it's still working. But maybe sometimes it doesn't work. That was someone else. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Your names are very similar. Yeah, I don't see you in my activity feed either. Then that must be a Twitch glitch. Well, thank you for the sub anyway, then. That That's weird. 
Uh, let's build a mini coaster. The glitch of the Twitch. Sounds like uh, like a Siska and Whisk title. Siska and Whisk novel. Well, not a comic. It's not a novel. Idem. Your name is Seven Archer Non. It's not too dissimilar from my name as it used to be on certain platforms. Both started with Lord. Although I was a bit more vain and called myself Lord Marcel. Which I don't really like specifically anymore. But I'm stuck with it on Reddit. I can't change away from Lord Marcel on Reddit because if I do, like. It's not necessarily the fact that I am known, you know, that what my Reddit account is known as. Because I can, you know, if, if I suddenly come into the rollercoaster tycoon subreddit as Marshalls96 or whatever, then that'll be fine. It's just the history, all my all my posts that are connected to my Reddit account, which I made, which are quite a lot. I don't want that history to go away. So that's why I can't really switch Reddit accounts. I see there's still quite a lot of discussion about a lot of US import laws or something like that with the food. I'm not really following everything because I'm also trying to talk and build a coaster at the same time. Is this... If I build it here, yeah, I think that will work. Um, is this... Yeah, that is low enough. Uh, yeah, I think that'll work. Let's go faster chain lift. Is this coaster naturally salmon pink? Yes, it's, I believe, one of the two coaster types that have a standard color scheme that makes the entire track salmon pink. The other one would be um, the invert. And both are ugly. I mean, this one is not that ugly. It's mostly fine because it's only a small track. But the invert is a big, bulky track. So it's not fine at all. Can we get a vinegar fry stall? You gotta ask Chris Sawyer, not me. Oh, I still need to raise it even higher. And I think also twen uh, about uh, 20 years too late. Hang on. How, how high up is that? Oh, okay. Yeah, the Fugo is one of the poisonous pufferfish thingies. Um, does this work? This works. Beautiful. I don't know if it makes it, though. Uh, it seems to make it. Which is good. This was a bit tricky to build this ride. And let's actually properly test it so that we can get the results. Magic Spaghetti Coaster. Uh, it's not really spaghetti. It's more... I don't know what it would be really, but uh, maybe it is spaghetti. And let's build an exit. Oh, yep, need to go this way. Come on, there we can see it now. There we go. And open. I believe, 
you don't die from Fugu. I believe you technically can, but most of the time you don't. Most of the time, I believe you get sick, but you don't die. Oh, hang on. No, let's not do 24 umbrellas. Or actually, nah, let's I can't be bothered to do it right now. But we do finally have Kush Machines. Which means we're going for roller coasters. And what a ride. Actually, let's do water rides first, because I want a certain water ride. Because um, I want to build one. For reasons. Hang on, did I just... Is that not open or it's broken down? Can the spiral slide even break down? Oh, yes, it can, apparently. Uh, thank you for the follow, Azure Gaming Dragon. I do know your name. I've seen you before. We're making decent money. Not really the money yet I was hoping, but it's slowly coming there. The more coasters we build, of course, the better. Slowly coming together. Let's see. We still have the mine right left. And of course soon new coaster types as well. Um, let's build it here. That maze looks odd. It does, doesn't it? I love the mine right. It's pretty cool. It's the mine right you need to build very different than a normal coaster and I learned a bit about how to build it when I made my mine ride overview because I had to build quite a few mine rides for it because I didn't have enough yet um, for all the shots I needed and it's quite a fine art to especially if you want to go up but you want to do it kind of staggered in such a way that it doesn't stall to the three kilometers per hour it goes uh, up hills with. So you want to accumulate a bit of speed on some straight track, then go up a bit, then accumulate some speed and stuff like that. Yeah, the guy's balloon disappears when they jump in maze, but they also get it back once they're done jumping. Yeah, cows kill more than a lot of stuff, but people also have a lot more interactions with cows. You know, it's it's silly if you say, why are you afraid of sharks? Because cows kill a lot more people. Yeah, that's like saying that the US um, has a higher GDP than uh, Monaco. Obviously, Monaco has... Th uh, 32,000 people or so. If you look at per capita, Monaco's is higher. But <laughs> that's not what the people always do. Wait, pickle coaster? Why is this a pickle coaster? Most sharks are harmless. I believe they are, but, you know, if you're not a shark aficionado and you can't recognize sharks, your best guess is to get the hell out of there in case it's one of the E.T. ones. Okay, I believe I've kind of... No, hang on, I can build through here? Yes. Color right is your choice. All right, go ahead. And that way. Is this? Will this be long enough? I'm kind of afraid that it won't be, but we'll see. We'll see. There you go. Cows can run very fast. A lot of those animals can run surprisingly fast. Hippos as well. Hippos are hippos are also quite dangerous. That's perfect. 
This one departs just as this one comes in. And it doesn't have to stop until now. Turn the salmon pink right in green track. Red rails on white support. You are a man to my heart. Let's see. Red. No, green track. Red rails and white supports. There we go. Much better. Oh, the Welsh flag. I didn't even think about that. Yes. Hippos are the most dangerous animal in Africa. No, they aren't. They are so not the most dangerous animal by a wide margin. Mosquitoes. Malaria. Alright, let's see the stats. Okay, we did get it long enough. Good. If this was Christmas coaster, it should have like brown support or something for the trees of, or for the stem of the Christmas tree. Any pickle shaped balloons? No, that's not how this game works. It's not in here. I doubt are custom shaped balloons a thing in any roller coaster building or theme park building game? Because I would wager that no, they're not a the thing anywhere. And that one. I think mosquitoes have kill are killing more people in Africa than humans are. Any balloon shaped pickles? There have probably been a balloon shaped pickle in the history of humanity at least a few times. We're slowly getting richer, which means that at some point we'll be able to well, pay our loan back. But also we're going to be able to build some uh, big rides. Nice and big. Okay, I don't know what the next water ride is. But either this one or the one after that is the one I want. Will you tear down the walls? No, I will not. Let's build another Marie Ground. Perfect. Oh, it's gonna rain again. Hang on, let's this time actually uh, go for max price umbrellas. Because we can. Because now we have cash machines. Thank you for the follow, Eric02. Uh, let's finish this up. There we go. Are there any open RCT2 mods? I mean, the plugin could make different shaped balloons, probably, but why would anyone make that? I mean, just for fun, I suppose, but yeah, sure. I mean, if you can make it and you want to, why not? It's a bit silly, but nothing wrong with silly. Hello, everybody. My name is Markiplier. Today we will see how crazy this castle really is. Is that any sort of good impression? It probably isn't. I haven't watched Markiplier in a long time. I never really watched Markiplier, maybe a video here or there. I don't know too much about him. Oh, it was not bad. Good. You know what I like from Markiplier? His world silence, world's, world's most silent or quietest. That's the word. Let's place. They were pretty good. Your voice is a little too deep for the impression. Wait. Isn't Markiplier the one with the extremely deep voice? Not me. Like, my voice is not very low. Have you played Park Tech or Planet Coaster? I've played Planet Coaster and I've played Park Tech in the early... Bad, so... 
That doesn't really count anymore. What do you think of a bigger spiral slide? Like a 50 meters tall spiraling out cone at least 10 times. I mean, sure, it's got to have like a nausea rating of 50 as well, but okay. Markiplier's voice is all over the place. Well, I mostly remember it being very deep and satisfying. There's something about the way that Marshall says video that I enjoy. Okay. I used to pronounce it video. No, not, not with that accent. But I would say, hello everyone, welcome to another video. Which is just the Dutch pronunciation. You spell it the same. That was pretty terrible. I cringe whenever I hear that back. <laughs> Very deep and satisfying. Oh, yeah, his voice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that Markiplier can uh, satisfy a lot of people in a lot of different ways. <laughs> How do you close all the windows? Shift plus backspace. That's a standard thing, so you don't have to like configure that or anything. And... Gdoom! We have a junior coaster on a hill. And just like that. Oh, nope. Oh, you know what's pretty exciting? Um, well, for me, I'm not sure if it's exciting for you, but uh, I find it exciting. Um, the Dutch, uh, the Dutch kind of royal house or whatever, has different, like, like um, you can get certain. What's the English words? Like certain titles. Um, like if you win Olympic gold for the Netherlands, you will get the title of um, Ridder van Oranje Nassau, which means um, Knight of Orange Nassau. You're basically not sort of knighted. Um, not sure it's not exactly the same as being knighted in England but or the UK. But somewhat close. I um, mean, you also can, you know, you can get it for a lot of other stuff as well. And then you got a different um, orders above that. You have the order of, I think, you start with, well, you start with your member of Orion Nassau. Um, but then you get uh, Knight of Orion Nassau, which is what Olympic gold medalists get. Um, then you get um, Officer of Orion Nassau. Then you get Commander of Orion Nassau. Then there's one more, which I don't remember. And then the last one is... Well, in Dutch it's called Ridder Groot Kruis. Which sounds a lot better than <laughs> um, Knight Big Cross. But Groot Kruis literally means Big Cross. But sometimes athletes who have done really special things, you know, they get officer of um, of Orion Nassau. But Irene Wust, the most successful um, Olympian ever for the Netherlands, and one of the most successful in the world ever, um, she, she was already um, knight of Orion Nassau, because... She won Olympic gold in 2006, 2010, 2014, and 2018. Then she did it again this year. Five times in a row. Um, individual gold as well, not in a team sport. And she just skipped um, getting appointed officer of Ryan Nassau. And she just straight up got commander. And she is the first, first athlete to ever... Get appointed commander of Oranje Nassau. I mean, there have been other people who have been athletes. But the reason that they got commander was always for something else. Or something else in addition to you know their um, things they did in sports. She is the first person who got it just for her achievements in sports. And I think that's pretty cool. 
it's like basically the highest honor they could give her. I mean, there are highest higher honors available, but those are for much more important people. You thought Irene Schouten. Now, Irene Schouten is the queen of this Olympics, but the thing with Irene Wust is that she has won gold 16 years in a row, which is five Olympics in a row. And that's pretty amazing. Seems like this ride vehicle stops further from the end of the station than others. You're right. That's weird. But yeah, Irene Schouten won three golds. And um, one bronze. Which is pretty damn good. Like... Uh, actually, I think, I believe, she might be the most successful athlete at a s Dutch athlete at a single Olympics ever. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I know she's the most successful speed skater at a single Olympics ever. Because Art Schenk and Yvonne van Genef have, have both gotten three gold, but she also got the bronze. And Irene Wust did get... Two golds and three silvers in the 2014 Olympics, but like one gold is counted higher than a million silvers, so than like any amount of silvers. So three golds and one bronze is ranked higher than two golds and three silvers. This should be another thing, even warm more <laughs> even more weird logics in RST2. Maybe at some point I'll make that video. But I, I already had to dig pretty deep for the second video. It's not... The fact that something is weird doesn't automatically make it good for a video like that. Oh. Did I... Did I forget an exit path again? I did. I mean, you don't really need one here. Because guess we'll probably find the path anyway. Well, except that guy behind there. But Oh no, he found the path. But it's mostly for mechanics at this point. TVs never break. Yeah, but if I say that, then it's also... Then you, you could say it about a lot of stuff. Like, anything that's not a ride never breaks. Like, stalls never go out of service. Um, these bannery things on the entrance never break. Like, um, benches never break unless there are vandals in the park. Like, they never get worn out. It's, you could say that about anything. Uh, that's why that's not particularly a good fact for such a video like that. That's the problem with writing videos, actually. Um, like, discussing things like this on the stream is very different from actually making videos and making them engaging for other people as well. And if you're making YouTube videos, your goal is not just to engage to the few people who are hyper interested in Rollercoaster Tycoon. I want to have some kind of lower denominator or whatever you want to call it. Okay, I got the water ride I want. Splash boats. Let's go for other rides now. Staff can have brakes. Ooh, fire all the staff. I'm not sure if they're very happy with that though. Let's fire up the auto clicker. There we go. Currently, one of the bottlenecks for video creation of me is actually the creative process. Writing the videos. Finding good topics that I also want to do. Like, I, I have like a 20 different write overviews that I could still do. But I don't want to make 20 write overviews in a row now, you know? That gets boring for me, gets boring for you. Um, you know, that kind of stuff. And I've been trying for a while now to get, like, a week head start. Because tomorrow's video was finished and uploaded today. And then I usually get a bit stuck and don't really know what to start. And then I get start working on the next video, like, Saturday or Sunday. And then it's done at, like, Tuesday or Wednesday. And I don't really want it. I want to work further ahead, which also means I can 
more comfortably without the, the stress of, you know, it needs to be done by Thursday, like tackle bigger videos, like you know, 15, 20 minutes long. Because I can easily make a 15, 20 minute long video in a week. It's just that I'm not really comfortable doing those if um, if there's like the deadline's quite close by. But the next video has already been written and recorded. I just need to edit it. And editing is actually the easiest part. Because um, when editing my videos, it's... I don't have to be physically in any kind of shape. By which I mean, like, if I record videos, my voice has to be good. Like, it has... I have to be able to use it at the moment, good enough for recording. Um, creatively, can be quite difficult. You know, writing a good video, finding a good angle, doing all the research. But editing is easy. Um, it's a lot of work. But it's easy. At least for me it's easy. So once the thing has been recorded. It's basically I just have to put time into it. Uh, let's see. So if I manage to finish that in two days. It's about the same length as. The video you're going to see tomorrow. And I've edited that in two days. Um. Then on Friday I'll have finished it. And then on Monday I can start with the video. For. Which has to be finished 10 days after it. So that's plenty of time. This is kind of a weird design for a splash boat. But yeah, it kind of works. Um, for the micro coaster version. Of the looping coaster with just a loop. With just a loop. What speed what speed should you set it to in miles per hour? Whatever the lowest... No, not really. I don't know. Just make sure that it's like... Goes... Like it just, just about doesn't make it. Just experiment a little. And you'll be fine. Let's go up again. No, I can't go down here because then... Ship's in the way. Ah, there we go. That's a big drop. Let's go in the ground. Much better. Inject the recording with time. Wait, what? Um, do the Minecraft streams. Not really. Like, I've done a few just showing up my world, but that's it. If, uh, I say a few, it's Two. Oh, you said you had to put time into it, huh? Good joke. Um, but I haven't really done any Minecraft streams. You know what the problem with streaming Minecraft is for me? Because I'm a very classic Minecraft player. I have a survival world um, where, you know, I have a lot of good gear and I just build stuff that I'd like to build. Um, and... If you want to stream Minecraft and make it interesting, either you need to be um, some kind of big Minecraft YouTuber and people will come to your stream just to talk with you, see what you're up to. And, you know, that's why, you know, big YouTubers from Hermitcraft and whatever, they have like sand mining streams. Um, and they do nothing but mine sand for three hours while they talk to their audience which is fine because it's not about the interesting stream it's about them needing to do that anyway because um you know they're mainly youtubers but they need to mine the sand anyway so they might as well stream it and have some audience interaction but if i were to do that you are here um, for, you know, for me, for some audio, for some interaction with me, but also for some kind of interesting stream. And just me mining sand for three hours isn't particularly interesting. Or me, you know, building a massive wall would take, would take two hours to build or whatever. It's also not really interesting. Or mining out a big area underground. 
It is also not really interesting. Um, and actually, a lot of that kind of Minecraft stuff in a normal world isn't particularly interesting. It's fun to do, it's relaxing to do, satisfying to do. But to watch, it's not particularly interesting. Now, you can still stream Minecraft, of course, if you're just about to stream, you know. Do speedruns, do like difficult challenges, or do weird like modded play or whatever. That keeps it interesting. But that's not what I do. So, I can't really stream Minecraft um, more than every now and then when I show off my world. Because the way I play Minecraft doesn't really support that. For how my, you know, my Twitch and stuff is set up and how it kind of works. Stream Age of Empires. I don't really play Age of Empires anymore, to be honest. Because I have a Minecraft world, which I put quite a lot of time in. Um, I sometimes play GeoGuessr. Um, I generally watch a lot of YouTube videos. Um, I stream twice a week this. I make videos. I, Especially at the moment, you know, put a lot of time into watching speed skating and doing statistics of it and stuff. Will, of course, not be during the summer. I don't have time for, for Age of Empires. Which is perfectly fine. You know, you can't play every game at the same time. Ooh, we unlocked the spinning wild mouse. But that's fine. Let's build it here. I, I don't need to play every game at the same time. It's not like I feel like I'm missing anything from not playing Age of Empires. Chat versus Marcel Geoguesser stream. How would you do that? Or is it like the chat guesser thing? You should still try that sometimes. I was thinking of asking you, have you ever played or heard of Dwarf Fortress? I've heard of it, but I don't really know what it is. I've, so I've never played it, obviously, then. Like, at the moment, I don't really need... A new game. I'm playing Minecraft. I'm very satisfied with it. I, was, I wasn't playing it because I was waiting for 1.18. and didn't want to restart the world. Um, so, yeah. I'm very, con you know, very content. Very happy with the games I'm currently playing. Maybe in the summer I'll pick up something else. Because there's no speed skating. Or I'll just play a lot more Minecraft. <laughs> or make a lot more videos. I don't know. But, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it, how, it is, how, how, how it is at the moment. Didn't you go to uni still? No, I don't. This is my job now. Still feels a bit weird to say. But it is. And that's also particularly why I talk a lot about what works on live streams, what doesn't work on live streams. Because, you know, money... <laughs> Like, whether you want it or not, um, you know, if if there's something easy that I can do that makes more money, then I will do it. You know, if it's... It's not that simple, of course. It, it has to align with my morals and the way I... the way I do YouTube and Twitch, of course, but... Yeah. Like, sometimes I see people shame YouTubers for doing stuff for the money. And I'm like, well, yeah, it's a job. <laughs> That's how jobs work. You do stuff for money. Sometimes you don't make the perfect video. Like, if I, if I could make a video slightly worse, um, but make twice as much money from it, then I would definitely do it up to a point. At some point, it's... You know, the video is too bad, too terrible, but there's always a point at which you're willing to make compromises. Like, a sponsored segment makes the video worse. I haven't had any, but I'm not against doing them. But, you know, you make so much money from them that it's worth it. 
Name or out of your choice. All right. Thank you for the follow, by the way. Eight minutes ago, Zippis. Did you play Minecraft as a kid? Um, the, the, well, not as a young kid, because it wasn't out yet. I really started playing Minecraft in 2011. I was 14. So, you know, I was still a kid, but not like eight or nine. Called the Crooked House, the Drunk Contractor's House. Uh, all right. I, I built this one. It's not the only one. I've got two. I think I need to rehire staff again. Yes. Hang on. Drunk Contractor's House. There you go. Um, let's see. Stuff like this. And that's also why sometimes my videos are 8 minutes and 5 seconds long or something like that. It's because once they are more than 8 minutes long, you can put in extra ads in the middle, mid holes. And that makes significantly more money. Now, tomorrow's video um, and the video after that are both slightly more than 8 minutes long. But they also... Both times that was um, not on purpose. That just happened to be that way. But for example, the one about um, the most insane park I've ever built. The Overcrowded Forest Frontiers one. I, ha I was at like 7 minutes and 59 seconds. And I made it a few seconds longer by extending on the places where I played a bit of the music. To show what the park sounds like. So it was 8 minutes and 1 seconds. Now I put an ad in the middle, you know, for a video that long, which takes quite a few hours to make. I think that's uh, more than deserved. So I make more money from it. You know, I gotta do something to, uh, be, to, to keep being able to do this. Hang on, I need to do the highlight path issues. There we go. Thank you for the follow, Jupaok. Uh, um. I don't have any vandalism, weirdly enough. Thought I would have loads, but apparently not. Have you played Sim Coaster or Sim Theme Park? I have not. I've never played a Sim game, but Sim City, but I don't think that's a proper Sims game. By the way, I wonder what are your opinions on that? Making a video slightly longer. In a way that isn't terrible. Like, I could, for example, if I have a seven and a half minute video, could just make my outdoor 30 seconds longer. But that's that's not, that's terrible. Um, but, you know, in a way that doesn't, um, you know, detract from the video. Because I there, was a, there have also been a few videos where I just added a few more lines. Or, like, a paragraph. With a with little bit more info. Which isn't out of place, but the reason I added it is still to get it over 8 minutes. But there are some people who think it's kind of scummy, you know. It used to be 10 minutes, a lot of videos used to be like 10.02, 10.03, 10.01, stuff like that. In fact, I once made a video that was like 10.02, um, which was entirely by accident. I mean, I knew about it, but... Um, I, I just happened to make it, and it happened to be that long. And I got a comment about it, but no, that was an accident. Um, which was funny, because the video I uploaded the day after was like 9.52. So it shows that I don't always do it. You like videos in the 10 to 20 minute range? Yeah, for me that's a bit more tricky, because most topics don't warrant that much of an explanation. Like, if I ever do a video about just the excitement rating, which I should probably do, then, yeah, that'll probably go towards 20 minutes. Now, I've made videos that long before. But those videos, like, 20 minutes long educational videos in my style but you know so similar to um other people um you know with a lot of like with a narrator and then some you know footage and animations and graphics and stuff 
20 minute long videos in that style take a long time to make. If you just, if it's just, you know, playing Minecraft and then just adding it to, together and adding a few graphics here or there, but that takes a lot less time to make. Because Minecraft does all the fancy graphics for you when you play it. A lot of creators who don't drag out on their content. If it can be a short video, it should probably be a short video. Yes, I agree. I also like longer videos. But... That doesn't mean I thought my video about lamps being useless. Except aesthetically... Uh, sorry. Um, my video about that... Yeah, it should not be more than two or three minutes long. I believe mine was like 120. Um, you could, of course, say a little bit more about it, um, probably, but... Like, yeah, I like watching long videos, but I probably would not like watching a long video about whether lamps are useful or not in Roller Coaster Tycoon 2, because it's just not the topic for it. Have you ever tried Stardew Valley? Um, I have not. Um, I've watched Cody play it. Uh, I, you know, I know a little bit about it, like, Sort of what it looks like, and you, know, you, you farm. Oh, I'm not aligned. I thought I was aligned. Whoops. All right, then. Need to go up. There we go. Water splash. Oh, hang on, I can still add a photo section, I believe. I love longer videos too, but I agree, a lot of your videos have no need. Yes. Also, making a 20 minute video, I can make a 20 minute video in a week, but... Making one every week would probably also be creatively exhausting, because... Writing and narrating a 20 minute video, you know... Writing a 20 minute video word for word... Um, and have it, you know, work narratively and stuff. That's... That's quite a challenge. Now, I believe my longest video ever, not including, like, live stream highlights and stuff, um, was, like, 21 minutes or so. And it was... Um, hang on, there's still scenery in the way. <laughs> I just clicked through the entire building to remove that piece. But that was basically 42 tips. Um, which is a lot easier. Because it's just 42 different disjointed things. So it doesn't need to, to have any kind of narrative. So that's a lot easier to do. But then again, 42 tips is a lot. And let's build path this way as well. So that we have more paths to build off of there later. There we go. Oh, no, I need to go up. Yeah, two more. Perfect. And. Ah. Uh, let's increase the chain of speed. Let's follow it. Hang on, didn't I just... Train one. Follow. Good. And now, if I still edit it my old way... You know, back when I started, my editing was a lot simpler. Less fancy graphics and stuff. Yeah, I could make a 20 minute video every week. You know, good two days writing the script, then you know, the next day recording it, and then edit it together in two days. But I can't edit 20 minutes of video in two days anymore. I mean, I technically could, but then I would have to work from like 9 till 9 or whatever. That I can't do 12 hour days. I, 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 I can do that, but not two days in a row. That's just too much. I could, but I don't want to. And especially, you know, it's just way too long. Um, 
So I just can't do that anymore. I have another UI window fully functional now. Nice. Yeah, this is what I call a steep chain lift. Um, Alchemichi Gander. Because, you know, you, you have like... You, sometimes you have a steep chain lift, you know. You're like a wild mouse. And you literally have chain lift available on steep pieces. I suppose that's technically a steep chain lift. But when I refer to something as a steep chain lift. I mean, it's a coaster that doesn't have access to chain lift on steep pieces. But you still go steeper than um than than normal uh like gentle slope which is what you do here then you also have ultra steep lift hills which is when you have a normal chain lift piece then you go to steep then you have an entire steep piece in between then you go back to gentle and have a chain lift piece again um which um the wooden coaster i think can't do but some like the course coaster can do it the trains are long enough um the swing suspended obviously because it's got massively long trains and those are very efficient not as efficient obviously as this is still steeper longer videos make more ad revenue right um i don't know i don't i think that there's not really a difference between like four and seven minutes like seven minute videos would have slightly higher chance to be recommended as long as they um you know because people tend to watch for longer and youtube values watch time so they are likely to get more views and thus make more money but the reason longer videos make more money is not because they're longer um at least not directly is this that's not connected is it and that'll be fine. Um, the reason is that as soon as a video is longer than 8 minutes, used to be 10, you are able to place extra ads in the middle of the video instead of just uh, before or after the video. And those extra ads obviously make money. Is that connected now? I think it is. How much week do you think you work per hour? Hang on, no. Hours per week, not weeks per hour. <laughs> um, I don't I don't really keep track of it, but... You know, these streams are already about six uh, hours per week on average. And um, plus video making, including, you know, also responding to comments and stuff that still work. Uh, probably about 35 or so. I think slightly less than 40. It depends also on what you classify as work, because I know that, you know, there are a lot of blue-collar, or uh, no, not blue-collar, white-collar jobs that people that say, you know, they technically work eight hours a day, but they only do work for, like, six hours, and then have, you know, a lot of little breaks in between where you, you know, I don't know, go on the Reddit on your phone or on the computer or whatever, stuff like that. Obviously, I do that as well. You know, I might edit a little bit for 15 minutes, then I'll go watch a YouTube video and then I start editing again or whatever. But that's, you know, that's how most people work. Unless it's a very menial task or a practical task, you have to take a lot of little breaks. Hello Marcel, love your videos. Glad I was finally able to catch your stream. Well, welcome, Darky Kitty, to your first stream. Alrighty. Ooh, we got a Virginia reel. I think in my very first Crazy Castle stream, which was also my very first stream on Twitch, I built like a Virginia reel around the park. Let's do that again. Now, actually, the thing on YouTube is, because when I place extra ads, because um, tomorrow's video will be... Like, I think 8.28 so long, I believe. Something between 8 and 8.5 and minutes. So, I'm able to place extra ads up to one ad a minute. Which is way too much. One ad every minute. So I obviously don't do that. I always add one extra ad for 
videos that are like 8 to 11 minutes or so long. Once you get to 12, I often add 2 extra ads. You know, 16, I might add 3. Something like that. But, you know, if you add an, an extra ad, people might not want to watch it. Well, they'll probably finish the video, but they might not be like as likely to come back. Because even, in, you know, subconsciously, they might... Uh, associate your video with a lot of ads and an unpleasant viewing experience. So it's a very delicate balance you have to strike between um, the most money you can make and um, you know returning viewers, getting the most views over a long period of time on many videos, and your own morals. Because I even don't think it's just morally right to do an ad every minute. Regardless, you know, I might not even do it if it was strictly beneficial in terms of long-term money and community building. Because I just don't like it. There's a lot of different things you have to weigh up as a YouTuber. Oh, thank you for the two months, Abel Graham. You know, my mom finds this particularly interesting. Um, not necessarily this question, but since I have become a YouTuber, you know, it's kind of like three and a half years ago, she has learned a lot about how YouTube works. And she finds that very interesting. All those little things that I you know that I take into account when making my videos and stuff and you know when choosing the topics and when doing certain stuff. Stuff she would have never thought about. Which even, it might be logical, but if you're not in that world, you don't do it, you might not think about it. Stuff that I would never have thought about if it wasn't for me making videos. So you can learn a lot of interesting things. See if it makes it. Oh, that's pretty good. The one question she asks me the most is... Whenever I have a certain video that gets a lot of views, for example, um, the one about the longest 10 by 10 coaster I did at the end in uh, December, then her favorite question is asking me why. Why is that particular video getting a lot of views? Why is that one getting much more views than seemingly similar ones? That you uploaded earlier or later that don't get the views. And that's of course a very good question. Because that's what all YouTubers are trying to answer. Uh, sometimes I can explain. You know, so, some videos I can predict that they'll, they'll get a lot of views and then I'm right. Some videos I predict they'll be popular and they won't be. And sometimes I don't think they'll do very well and they'll explode. It's, so sometimes I can explain, I can give her a satisfying answer. Sometimes, like, I don't know. <laughs> Ground guest 187. Alright, well, 1087. YouTube is fickle. Yes. But. YouTube is not random. Um, for example, the... I knew there was a big chance, it's never certain of course, that the video about the 10 by longest 10 by 10 coasters would do well. I knew there was a very good chance that it would do well, because it's the kind of documentary style video that has been doing very well on YouTube. And I have the base audience, you know, 80 something thousand subscribers, to give it its initial boost. And when people like it a lot, there are enough people around to share it. And if enough more people watch it than usual, quicker, then YouTube will know, hey, um, you know, it's a meaningful difference because I have enough subscribers for that. A big enough base audience. So that's very nice. Fire all the staff, all right.
Are you building the Virginia Reel around the entire park? Yes. Also, I think I've told this before, but I'm going to say it again because I still like the ideas. And the more I say it, uh, the more I'm actually likely to actually do it. Um, I have some video ideas which um, involve filming on location. Uh, and includes me being on camera. Um, the first one, I won't film at least until um, spring has fully arrived. For reasons. Um, I won't tell you what the reason is. Because I'll give it away, probably. Um, so, you know, I have to wait at least like at least two months. But, yeah, I hope to do that at some point. Alright, see ya, Max. Where's the burger store? I don't think we have it in this park. I wonder what the intensity will be. It might be too intense, but I don't care. I'm going to keep it around anyway. That's cool. Yeah, I have like a whole series held out in my head, but I don't know. It might be like not good at all. Um, but it might also be very good. And of course, I hope the latter. Does a hill contribute the same to the stats for every coaster? Every coaster has different... Like, G-forces contribute different stats on every coaster. Not every. Like, similar coasters might have the exact same numbers, like the looping and the corkscrew coaster, for example. But it's at least not the same on every coaster. And that, and then we're almost done. Actually, let's make it a little bit. There we go. No straightaways. And that's a massive Virginia reel. Lovely hilly tubs, yeah. And there's the first hill. Well, drop. There's the first hill. Second hill, technically. Oh, there you got the big woody. This is pretty relaxing to watch. Oh, big castle tower. And there we have the second chain lift, which is quite a bit longer. And the third chain lift, and here we're going to reach maximum velocity. Let's see how fast we go. Um, 60 nice. Cool. I hope I didn't overdo the lateral G's anywhere. There's always a danger on uh, coasters without banked turns. Ooh, 67. There's... Oh, yeah. Those... Those are problematic. I can tell that. One higher should be good enough, though. There we go. Name it the same name as in your first Twitch stream. I think it was called something like wheelie quick. Some is that like a wee like like a wheelie real or a really quick like spelled like Virginia real. It it had some kind of pun. I can look it up. But first I'm going to do the Q line. Um, also, now I can't rehire staff quite yet, but almost. Really quick. Yeah, maybe. I'm, I'm not exactly sure what it was. But that's not going to work. Let's see. Uh, oh, I do need to go one higher. 
Perfect. Alright, let's save. And let's load. Uh, crazy Castle stream something. Um, crazy Castle. I have one called Crazy Castle or stream, right? Apparently not. I I do know I renamed it, like saved it as a new name recently because I could never find it. But now I can't find it again. Um, I have way too many save files. I thought I renamed it recently. Maybe I didn't. Oh, I think it's this one. No, the 15.11.20 was a different stream. Oh, it's Crazy Castle Stream written without a space. There we go. I did have a Virginia Reel around the entire park. It's called... Oh, Real Quick. I was close. Ooh, there's one music style that really... Uh, it really springs out of it. Anyway, let's go back to this one. And name it real quick. That's a nice homage. Wonder what the stats will be. Ah, we're fine on laterals, which is good. We do have 26 drops, which is a lot, but... Oh, only 8.2 intensity. That's pretty good. 7.02 excitement and 7.59 nausea. It's actually better than I expected. So I'm very happy with that. Oh, we're rich, baby. Like, if I pay back the loan, we have almost 100k. Hell yeah. We're doing amazingly well. We should name the, rename the Marshall Point for after some like park rating or guests. Nah, I think Marshall Point is fine. Could probably be better, but I don't really matter what they're called. Something points. Probably a good idea though. Let's hire a few handymen. To uh, play on the park. A few mechanics. A few entertainers. Pick a coast type for me to build. Alright. Oh, hey, Cody. It's you. Also, let's clear the grass, because that's more beautiful. Build a classic death... Do I have the looping coaster? I don't. I don't have the looping coaster, sir. So I can't. I know I'll unlock it at some point. But I don't have it quite yet. Also, I'm not going to commit uh, genocide here. I'm not going to kill people with a looping coaster. How about a wild mouse? Alright. Let's build one down here. And up. Oh, yep, yep, yep. And then down. I've been lurking and working. How oh, that rhymes. How oh, work's been good. I can't watch your streams very often because you, lately you uh, stop streaming in the morning very often, often stream uh, in the evening. But your evening is my night. And I like my sleep. It makes sense that you stream in the evening because uh, streaming in the morning before work at 6 a.m. is very early. <laughs> You are streaming tomorrow. If I remember, I'll tune in. At your usual Thursday time. Ah, yes. But, you know, whenever you're streaming The Sims, I'm not always too interested in Sims. I do have stuff to do. Oh. Spinny, spinny, spinny wild mouse just crashed. Oh. 
Oh, it's because it's broken down. I can't double close it. There we go. Safety cut out. That's unfortunate. Put it in your calendar. Nah. I'll probably remember. Okay, now it's fixed. And... We're back to normal. Name a ride of your choice. Go ahead. Ooh, and then we go down again. Um, can you name the spinning wild mouse the Pukinator 9000? Sure. Puke and a turbo. Oh, I can't log on. Puke and a nine thousand. There you go. By the way, have you guys noticed that I have um, scrolling by holding your mouse to the side? Like, you know, whenever you push your mouse to the side of the window, you can scroll. I've had that turned off for a long time now. Like, I don't know. At least many months, maybe even a year already. Um, and I'm doing fine without. And the reason I initially turned it off is because whenever I would need shots in my videos, I would uh, like have several shots of exactly the same thing, but I will also need to click on some buttons in between. I would accidentally like nudge the screen a little bit, which would be an which would be very annoying and ruin the shot. Now ruin all the shots, and I would need to do it again. So I just used to turn that off whenever I was doing those shots, but then I at some point I just never turned it back on, and I got used to it. All right, let's see if uh, I think I might be going too fast in some of the turns, but we'll see. Crash could have been avoided if only you used block breaks. I will never start using block breaks. That's my greatest failing as a rollercoaster tycoon player that I never use block breaks. But at this point, I'm sticking to it because it's a trademark of mine. And it's good to have trademarks. Similar with the bull rushes that I in, that I always use um, whenever I need big scenery boosts. Oh, whoops. Doesn't make it. It's just my thing. We have one of those types of steel wild mouse rides with the spinning cars at my local parks. Also a dark ride. Oh, that sounds pretty intense. Greetings from Uden. Ooh, I have an aunt and uncle who live in Uden. And they're pretty cool. Say greetings back to Uden. And let's build a queue line. Where is Uden? Somewhere in Brabant. North Brabant. I don't know much about Uden. Other than that, it's in North Brabant. <laughs> Alright. I think this coaster will be pretty good. Uh, let's see what the stats will be. The stats are not particularly good of our park. Do we have a lot of vandalisms? Let's see. Uh, no, we have zero vandalisms. As far as I can see. Even though we ruined the park with puke... Twice? I think twice, but maybe even three times. Pretty good going. The, we just ah the spiral coast. I was like, 
There's more coasters than there used to be here, but couldn't figure out which one it was for a while. Is it me, or did the park rating just go down again? Hang on. Are some guests trapped somewhere or something? I have a feeling the park rating is... screwed. Did I... I think I... I might have trapped some guests somewhere. Either that or I'm misjudging it and the park rating will recover in a minute. But I think I might have trapped some guests. Oh no, it seems to be recovering, never mind. It was just terribly low from a few people that died. Like, okay, some people died, but that's not, not a good reason to rate my park lower. Like, it's still a fun park. Sure, you can die, but... Like, the people who died can't give it a negative review. So I don't know what they're moaning about. Look at Park Rating Spectre. I could do that, but that's boring. I'll just wait around and see what happens. Drown a guest of your choice. 21... 37. Good choice, good choice. They'll die and... They'll suffer. They'll suffer greatly. At the hands of God and in this universe, I am God. 21, 37. Well, first they're on the splash boats, which is going to take a while to complete. <laughs> All these boats on the lift hill. What's the uh, set of this? Ooh, 8.07 excitement. I believe that's the highest excitement rating in the park. Uh, 4.84 intensity, 2.48 nausea. <laughs> that got dark fast. Yeah, but I like saying that I am God. That just sounds epic, doesn't it? It's like the scene from The Matrix with the train man. It's like down here, I make the rules. And he kicks Neo or punches him or whatever. Then he says, down here, I'm God. It's pretty epic. I could just double close <laughs> Splash Bros just to force him off it, but I'll wait. I'll make him enjoy his last ride of his life. There are guests trapped at the end of the wooden coaster. I knew it. Yeah, the park rating is going down again. Hang on. At the end of the wooden coaster. The end of which wooden coaster? Still not seeing it, but there are guests trapped somewhere. The gra oh, the swinging ship. There we go. I thought it was connected. Turns out it wasn't. So my my instinct first instincts were right. There we go. Now it's connected. Park rating should go up very soon. <laughs> That's a very sharp decline. They all want to leave the park, probably, but it's gonna take a while because they're all walking very slowly because they're out of energy. And you're gonna die. Say, I am God on the streets. Uh, no, I don't think I will. But it's fun to say it in the game because it's true. In this place, I make the rules. In this place, I make the threats. Down here. I am God. That just sounds epic. That's a hurry tall drop. How about I am God in the sheets? You'll never know whether I am.
You should try playing No Limits too. No! <laughs> Please no, I, that would be terribly boring. Like, not that it's a bad game, not that the game is intrinsically boring, but for me it would be. I'm not about that realistic coaster design. Like, No Limits 2 is basically a sandbox coaster designer and you need to make it like realistic and stuff. That's not for me. I want to do extreme stuff and have it, you know, just be able to do stuff like this, play it casually or... You know, optimize the hell out of with unrealistic stuff, but very like mathematical and ordered. I like the word ordered. Ordered stuff. That's not what no that's what not what no limits is. You can still cause your coasters to crash. Yeah, but crashing coasters isn't a thing I do very often. It's not like a thing I like to do a lot. Like yeah, I had a coaster crash here, but I didn't do it on purpose. And even if I like crashing coasters, the thing about, you know, if you like crashing coasters a lot and you can do it in no limits, you know, it's fun for half an hour. And then what? Like, even people who like crashing coasters a lot will not be doing it all the time. Like, they won't be... I doubt anyone is starting up Roller Coaster Tycoon and then just is, you know, killing guests... Randomly for three hours. Maybe you might do that once, but eventually you want something of more substance. Right? At least I would. You did that. Yeah, but I did it as an art piece. I knew someone would say that. I thought about it myself as well. But there was a reason for me to do it. Because I have an audience, and it was both. To it, I did it mostly just to see the reaction from people. Just to see what people would react like if I just did that. Just not announce it, just do it. Um, and then it's art. And then it's just another thing I've done. And I made some money from it, which is, of course, also very nice. But that's different. Like, who is going to do that just on their Saturday afternoon? You know, just start a roller coaster. Just going to drown guests for three hours straight on their own. That, like, I wasn't on my own. I was talking to you guys as well. Yes, making money off the suffering of the guests. Yeah, I mean, I've made quite a lot of I've made quite a lot of uh, videos that included, you know, killing guests or you know how to kill guests without losing rating. There we go, ratings fully recovered. The number of guests has gone down a bit because they all just left the park. But you know, it'll, it'll recover. I really like this big uh, Virginia reel. Make the load times in the park more realistic. What do you mean? Like, make it longer for a ride to load? I don't think it generally takes that long in real parks. Not in my experience, anyway. Oh, we have a loopy, loopy, loopy. Let's build it... There. And... Let's do boosters. The occasional death of guests is one of the things that makes the stream more fun. Yes. Oh, I fully agree. Like, I like it that guests die. Um, every now and then. But if I, if killing guests was all I did on streams, most of you would be bored with it pretty quickly. Um, that's the thing. Guests dying or, you know, making a death coaster is fun every once in a while. 
but that's not what you can base a good game on. The thing about these boosters is that they're not as slow as I thought they would be. I was going to say they're very slow, but they're a bit faster than I thought they were. Which is good. But also, it didn't need to be that long, but it looks nice. Yeah, we've got all really fast. Not just for you, also for me. Because... Part of this is obviously the streaming. I need to enjoy it too. And it seems silly to say that, but... You know, it seems like such an obvious thing. But I do need to enjoy it. Otherwise, I'm not incentivized to keep doing it. And the same goes with YouTube, of course. I could probably make more money if I did some kind of... Like, if I did my videos differently. Uh, but then I wouldn't enjoy it as much. I wouldn't build as good as a community. And... Eventually, I will probably make less money. Because either the community wouldn't be as good, and I would get less views over time, or I would just quit because I found it too boring to do. And, you know, if you quit, you don't really make any money anymore. It's hard to make quality content if you're not enjoying what you're working on. Yes, it is. Now, if you're only doing the editing, like, if you're an editor, um, then it can work. Because if you're only doing the editing and it just needs looks good, and um, that'll be that's fine. You don't really need to enjoy the source material. But when you're writing the videos and also recording, then it's really important that you enjoy it, or at least. You know, every now and then there can be a video that you don't really enjoy. But if generally you enjoy your own videos, and you can, for those videos in between that are just, you know, good to make, you can still bring it up. But if constantly you don't enjoy making videos, people can tell. People can definitely tell. It's both in the scripting, because if you're not enjoying it, you're more likely to be um, less detailed. And the script will you know, generally be worse. And of course in the narration. You know if you kill enough sims the game will say something like. You know this is supposed to be a life simulator. Oh, that's pretty good. I like that. And the exit pause. Um, let's go like that. Yeah, why not? And then like that. Hells to the air. One question How many brakes do you need to put in roller coasters? In this one. Zero. How many brakes do I have in this park? I know I have one here on the wild mouse. Um, I think that's the only one. <laughs> I think that's the only brake track piece in this entire park. <laughs> so you don't need a lot. I can tell you that. <laughs> I don't... I don't use vlog brakes. I also don't really use regular brakes. <laughs> if I don't absolutely have to. Okay, let's look at the stats of this ride. Oh, we have a lot of uh, positive Gs. Uh, interesting colors. That's definitely more interesting. Who needs brakes when you can go fast? Oh yeah. I love going fast. Name the park. Um, brakes equals less throughput. Okay. 
actually, that's false. The highest throughput I've ever achieved on a ride was a ride which had eight block breaks. Well, technically 12, because the station is also block breaks, but eight block break track pieces and 13 block sections or something like that. It had seven trains. Or, yeah, seven, I believe. Wrong username. No, I said Kuwakak, right? Oh, close enough, anyway. Oh! Wrong username for the... Oops. I'm stupid. <laughs> I'm stupid. I, I see it. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Camelot is only a mo model. I don't get that reference. Thank you for correcting me, chat. Sometimes I read wrong, you know. It happens. Monty Python. Ah, I have... Which Monty Python? I have seen the Holy Grail. I know Camelot is in that, so probably from there. Knight of the Round Table. Okay, so it is from there. 7458423631. Pretty good stats. Apparently humans aren't all that terrible with short bursts of linear g-force, at least in one direction. No, I mean, people have withstood a lot of g-force and not died, so they were pretty good. You saw on the credit, beer can be shipped to students in the Netherlands. What do you mean? Like, you can just order beer to be delivered to your home, obviously. That's... Like, order beer either at some grocery store or, I don't know, from Bol.com, which is the Dutch version of Amazon. That's not weird, right? Well, I got a mini says. Let's see if I can find a place for it. Seems to be a good place. There are beer careers. I've heard of that. So that you can order a lot of beer in once in one go. I've never used it. I never used it, but last time, yeah, last time I don't really drink anymore. Except when I'm at my parents' place, I'll have a wine. But the last time I've had alcohol in my own home was years ago. Um, but yeah, I can see why it's useful. Is this a sarcastic mini swinging coaster? Eh, I don't really... Sarcasting? I feel like I'm missing a joke here or something. Have you played Geshin Impact? No. I have not. Yeah, in the USA, beer is 21 plus. I find the attitude that the USA has towards all alcohol very weird. You know when I had my first alcohol? When I was like seven. And I didn't have a full beer, obviously not. Because that would be bad parenting. But, you know, my parents would have wine or beer at dinner you know, sometimes. And I had a little sip. You know, as kids, you're interested in what your parents have and stuff. Um, then, you know, that, that keeps getting, you, know, you keep getting a little bit more. And at some point, you're like 13, 14. All right, you can have a small glass of wine instead of just a little sip. And, you know, you keep getting slowly more. And then when I was 15, I had my first proper beer slash alcoholic drink. I was at a friend's place on the camping, uh, on the camping place. Staying at uh, his place. And um, he was like 17 at the time. Which was legal drinking age. It isn't anymore. But back then it was 17. Um, and he got a beer. And he offered me one as well. And I was like, yeah, why not? I'll try one. Uh, my mom wasn't there. And his dad didn't mind. Now, when my mom picked me up like a few days later. 
uh, you know, she obviously asked me about, you know, what did you do? Did you have fun, etc. And I told her, oh yeah, I had a beer, half uh, half liter of beer. And she was just like, oh, okay, is that that's all? Like that's a good attitude. It it means that you know, in the USA, it's basically like illegal to get any kind of alcohol before you're 17, or sorry, before you're 17, before you're 21. Um, and then as soon as you're 21, people go all out because it's that thing which has been hyped up and stuff like that. And that doesn't really happen here. Sometimes it does still, but not everyone. Like, it happens a lot less. And I was able to, you know, buy my first drink when I was 16. Now, when I turned 17, I was not allowed to buy alcohol anymore. Because that law changed from 17 to 18, or from 16 to 18, when I was 17. So I was right in between. Yeah, I know it's, it's legal in the US, but... I wonder how much it happens. And also, if you're... Like, here, generally the police and stuff don't really... Give a damn if you get drunk as a kid. Like, if you get drunk as a 16-year-old... Like, what's gonna happen when the police find you? They'll... You know, if you drink, no, they'll break up the party. They'll... If you're not a nuisance... They'll bring you home. Um, and, you know, they'll bring you home to your parents. And that's it. Like, I have read stories about American kids, you know, having a party and stuff when they're like 16, 17 and drinking. Or even like 19. And then just fleeing when the police comes. I believe that's not a thing here. It's not as far as I know. You know, if the police comes... And your party was just a bit loud and nothing else. They'll just break up the party. And that's it. Their, their attitude to kids drinking alcohol is very different. In the USA, they can charge your parents with supplying alcohol or allowing underage consumptions on their premises. Like, why is that a problem? I don't see the problem, but okay. At most, they might toss you in the drunk tank if you're completely wasted and get your parents. Oh, I believe it's also most most kids probably also not wanting to get caught by their parents. And obviously, if you get caught by the police, your parents will know. Because they'll get notified. Um, but yeah, for me, drinking... I, I wonder. Like... I'm, pro I'm very biased because I get most of my info about those American stuff from Reddit, which there's always a hint of truth, of course, in those kind of stories on Reddit. They don't come from nowhere, but they're often very exaggerated and biased. Um, so how much, like, are kids afraid to be caught by their parents drinking um, in America? Is that a big thing? As far as I know it is, but that might not be entirely true. Because how it's here, it's not really. Like sometimes it is, of course, when you drink a lot and you don't want your parents to know you're, you're drunk, but... At least in my household, we've already we've always been open, you know. My mom doesn't care if we get drunk. Um, she would, of course, at, if, if at some point it had inhibited our lives... She would have uh, stepped in. But at some point, uh, my brother got very drunk. And my mom had to pick him up in the middle of the night because he got a little bit too drunk. She wasn't very happy about that because, you know, in the middle of the night. Um, but she also didn't, you know, no consequences or anything. She was happy that the next day my brother had, uh, had quite the hangover. Because she was like, you know, I'll teach you a bit of a lesson.
Yeah, I suppose it is that, you know, some parents care, some parents don't care. USA has 300 million people after all, which is a lot. Okay, there's a good chance that this mini suspended coaster will crash at some point. We'll see. I do think that generally, the more if you have a more lax um, attitude towards alcohol as a parent, you know, you're not hiding your drinking from kids, you're letting them have a sip when they're young. The kids are less likely to go absolutely mad when they can finally buy alcohol for themselves. Because they're already used to it. It's not this big mixed mythical thing anymore. The only time I had to call my mom to pick me up for being drunk when I was 24. The only thing she asked was to get breakfast the next morning to pick up my car. Nice. That was true for you. Yeah. Also, thank you for the 15 months, by the way. I did see that, but I missed it because I was in a story, probably. <laughs> thank you for the 15 months, Ukraine. Alcohol is overrated in your opinion. Yes. I agree. Um, you know, there have been certain I don't know, parties I've been at, like 17, 18. Drank a lot. And in hindsight, I'm like, I wasn't pretty... Like, yeah, I had fun there. But if I need to drink at a party to have fun, then I'm at the wrong party. That's basically... How I see it now. Ironically, a lot of the really old, strict, rich families in America are the ones who tend to end up having high prolific drug alcohol issues amongst the kids. Yeah, I've heard about that. I personally don't like it when I see people around me drinking. Most of my family went crazy with the alcohol one New Year's Eve, and it made my friend and I severely uncomfortable. Oh yes, I would be uncomfortable about drunk people as well, but you know, there are certain there are two friends who when I'm at their place, I don't tend to drink and they'll tend to have a few beers. But that's fine. Cuz they might be slightly tipsy, but that's about it. It's not going to give any problems. Now, if they got very drunk, which with one of those friends I have spent um, a while walking through a city while they were drunk and I wasn't which wasn't very fun <laughs> um, like that's not very fun for me but that doesn't happen like it happened once but we were like 16 at the time it doesn't happen anymore yeah if the kids are kept away from it they naturally become more curious Just educate your, educate your kids around alcohol. Like, I, I like a glass of wine, you know, at Christmas dinner. Or, you know, when you're having dinner at, uh, you know, outside in the weekend, in the sun, like 7 p.m. or whatever. Um, in the summer, you know, a nice glass of wine or, you know, in the afternoon at like 5. When you're having a link, you know, afternoon snack or whatever. That, that's... I like that. Alcohol is nice. But not when you need to drink it to have fun. At least, that's my opinion. I never drank very much before I quit completely about three years ago. Don't miss it. I used to actually drink quite a lot. Like, a certain friend would come over every two weeks or so and we would get drunk you know we would play Mario uh, Kart and we're both pretty damn good at it Mario Kart DS and every time we didn't both get uh, in place one and two you know at, ahead of all the computers we would need to take a shot and in the beginning that happens every now and then but the more shots you take the more drunk you get the worse you drive so it happens more and more and you know, we a lot of strong stuff like Jägermeister and Goldstar was involved in vodka. Um, and at some point, I used to never get a hangover. I used to always, you know, I would be a bit tired, a bit slow, a bit, a bit mad the next day if I drank a lot, but never really a true hangover. But then at some point once, when I was 19, 
I got a terrible hangover. Like, I had a terrible headache for the entire day. And that caused me to quit cold turkey. Because um, I just didn't want that ever again. It was terrible. Um, so I quit cold turkey for half a year. Um, and after that, I did continue drinking, but like I do now. Which basically means every now and then, one or two glasses of wine or maybe a beer. That's about it. Ask a geography question, alright. And... Come on. There we go. It's funny that I say I drank quite a lot, but I got drunk once every two, maybe sometimes three weeks. Which, like, some people get drunk every weekend. I can't even imagine that. Like, I want to have nice and calm weekends. Also, I didn't get drunk on weekends. I got basically drunk on whatever random evening um, we got together. Which was sometimes in the weekend, sometimes in a weekday. Uh, my worst hangover I got when, uh, on Wednesday. Because I got drunk on Tuesday night. What country goes by the land of fire? I don't know. But, I'm going to guess Indonesia. Because Ring of Fire, Volcanoes, etc. Is your merry-go-round floating? Um, yes. Yes, it is. Is it? No, not actually. They are support. They're very strong support. They're very anchored very well. But uh, it works. Not a bad guess, but it's Azerbaijan due to the natural gas resources. I would have never guessed that. Like, Azerbaijan doesn't even have the highest natural gas resource in the world. Or does it per capita, like per size or whatever. Because obviously Russia has more, but Russia is huge. So that doesn't really count. Oh, no, I... Okay, there we go. That's the exit path. Let's make sure I don't trap guests again. And the entrance path. The queue line. Hey, Rubik's Cumbert. Cubermt. How you doing? Uh, all right. And open. Ooh, we are very rich. We have 200,000. But we're not. We're losing guests because we're not advertising anymore. And um, the soft guest cap is too low. And mini suspended. There we go. Advertisements. Parker's coming along nicely. Most of the castle is still there. I've you know, deleted a few ball pieces and stuff here and there. But most of it is still there. It It's very similar, actually, to my first live stream. It's extremely similar, but I, I think I also had a big woody in the back here. But I like it this way. Let's build another looping coaster. Let's see. Where should we build the station? Let's build it above here. Yeah, why not? Looping cuts has a high support limit, which is useful. Let's make it a long station. Let's make it launched again. Why not? It's funny, I get tired of RCT, then I watch your video streams and I get motivated to play again. 
You know what's also funny? I also sometimes get tired of RCT. I got tired of RCT like at some point. I think it was like one and a half years ago. Then I started streaming on Twitch twice a week. And then I was no longer tired of RCT. The streams help me as well. To stay motivated for the game. And I don't actually play Rollercoaster Tycoon anymore outside of the streams. Which makes sense. You know, playing it 6 hours a week. Still almost 1 hour a day. I like how you have the Ask the Geography question reward because I like learning about different countries and cultures as a hobby. So do I. Um, not culture so much, but I do like learning about countries and facts about countries and stuff. And I know quite a lot about it and I like talking about it, so I had it as a reward. Now, alright, see you, Arsenal. That doesn't mean I you can't ask a geography question without using that channel point reward I will always you know if I can answer it but if you use the channel point reward you can be sure that I answer it and that I go a little bit more in depth about it you know especially if it's a busy chat and talking about a lot of other stuff I'm always the opinion of that games need sometimes where you don't play them for you to enjoy them after you've sunk an ungodly amount of time into them yeah, kind of like downtime. It's similar for speed skating with me at the moment. Because I'm following speed skating more intensely than I ever have before. You know, I'm keeping track of a lot of statistics. And, you know, I'm active on Twitter with an account. I'm active on Dutch speed skating forums. You know, stuff like that. It's a lot of fun. I love doing it. Absolutely. I'm, I'm incredibly passionate for, about it. But... It also sometimes can be quite exhausting, especially during the Olympics, uh, which are over now. But, you know, for about 12 out of 15 days, every day watching speed skating, spewing out statistics and stuff like that. And I'm very glad that speed skating has seasons and isn't throughout the entire year. <laughs> Is there a country you loved learning about but haven't had the chance to visit? I'm I'm honestly quite intrigued by China. Um, now including whatever you know stuff is happening, you know, excluding all the stuff that happened in China, whatever. But there's so much so much different landscapes in China, so many. And so many massive cities in basic places you wouldn't expect. Like when learning about cities with over a million people in China and stuff like that it just doesn't end it's absolutely mad it's just so big in every aspect and you say I haven't had a chance to visit I'm I'm not like traveling the world visiting visiting a lot of countries I'm not very well traveled um, like, there are a lot of countries I would like to visit, but, well, Corona doesn't help, of course, but, uh, I'm not someone who travels a lot. China has a rich and fascinating history. Almost every country does. Like, maybe not the country itself, like South Sudan is 11 years old, it's not very rich and fascinating, well, maybe fascinating, but not very long at least, but... The peoples of South Sudan obviously have a very long history. So, in pretty much every place there's a lot of interesting stuff to learn. The one downside... Like, all the people here that like geography, I'm pretty sure you know of the channel Geography Now. Um, they do country profile videos, like... When I do write overviews, they basically do country overviews. Um, and they obviously don't say this country is bad and this is good, which I do it right, obviously not, but, you know, the, a, a profile of the country. But I don't really like 
geography now, unfortunately. Like, the info is good, but I just... The presentation style doesn't really work for me. Which is unfortunate. For example, today they uploaded the episode on Tanzania. Which would be really interesting. Except I clicked off after like a minute because I... I, know, I just couldn't stand it for some reason. Which is really unfortunate. But there's just something in the presentation style that doesn't work for me. Also, it, I, it's the same kind of with the narration of the YouTube channel Real Life Lore. Maybe the voice is just too intense. Like, the voice of the of real life lore is very intense. I wish it went slower and gave you more time to absorb imagery. Maybe that's the thing. Like, at least my videos are significantly slower paced than Geography Now's videos. Are they too political? No, no, no. I've, it's not... It's not the... Like, it's not the topics. Um, also, I, I'm, I'm quite interested in politics, so... Like, I like discussing about certain topics in politics, like also controversial topics. I'm not doing that on stream, because I don't want the stream to be about that. But with certain friends, yeah, I've discussed about different topics a lot, and it's fun and interesting. Geography now feels very kid-targeted. I don't... Well, maybe, you know, with the history stuff. Like, in the shortest way, I can summarize it. And then it's like, you know, Iron Age, Bronze Age, Romans, Hunnic people, Mongols, um, Japanese civilization starts, British come, Americans bomb it, and Japan. I don't know, something like that. That would basically be its history section. Um, which, yeah, I suppose is kind of targeted towards kids. The entire history of the world, I guess. But that's a masterpiece. It's a very different video. Very different kind of video. Name or right of your choice. Go ahead. Uh, let's see if I unclear hate. The log flume called the Sea Man Slide Prague. Alright. Sea Man Slide Prague. Break. Oh, minus the break. What did the break do there? Have you seen the RCT? And it just crashed again. Well, whoopsie daisy. Again, because it's broken down. Oh, it's because they're stuck on the chain lift. And another coaster comes in and just bumps against it too fast. This kind of crash can only happen when the chain lift isn't at the start of the ride. Um, yeah, I have seen an RST video where the coaster sync to Bohemian Rhapsody. It's really cool. Funnily enough, he is not the first one. Or she, I don't know. Um, to make a roller coaster tycoon video. It's still not fixed. To make a roller coaster tycoon, or to try to make a roller coaster tycoon video with Bohemian Rhapsody. I have tried it as well, but it was a very different kind of video. There we go, it's fixed. And it doesn't did it didn't end up working out anyway. It wasn't even a video original. I think I started doing it before I made videos. Yeah, it fits the song well. Not sure if he doesn't get it or doesn't care. The break thing, I have no idea. Like, I'm just thinking of Prague. Misspelled. That's all I'm thinking of. The rest of the name. Seaman. I mean, I get that. I just didn't bring any attention to it, because... It's an old joke. I don't know. Hey, what's up, Cringe Bro? Hey! Rupku again. Welcome. 
and 16 riders. How are you all doing? I hope you're doing well and welcome to... Well, it is probably quite near the end of this stream. I don't think I'm going to continue... I don't think I'm going to finish all the four years. Um, we're going to beat the goal. Um, but welcome. I hope you're having a good time. I hope uh, on Rupku's uh, channel. And uh, what did you play? Of you? Probably Roller Coaster Tycoon. I think you always play Roller Coaster Tycoon. I'm not entirely sure. Let's see, where shall I build this? How about there? <laughs> Why not? Oh, Hunter Call of the Wild, we just raid random people. Ah. Well, not entirely random, because I've been raided a l quite a few times already. Um, so it's not entirely random. Let's see. Oh, that is not a straight bit of path. Neither is that. Neither is that! Alright, we'll go up then. There we go. Perfect. Semi-random, or pseudo-random, or biased random. Something like that. I have never heard of Hunter Call of the Wild, so I don't know what kind of game it is. Also, I once... Not too long ago, I made... Uh, I had a launch tree fall. Launch in the air, because that's what launch tree falls do. Um, but I had set the weight of the card to the minimum possible. And it had a really funny effect. It... It, it, it kind of, you know, sped up, slowed down, sped up, slowed down. It's really weird. Can't do that right now, but uh, maybe I'll do it at some point. Realistic hunting game, you shoot deer or other animals. That's very cruel. That's incredibly cruel. Like, I would never, ever do something that cruel. I just don't find that acceptable, you know? You just, you just can't do that. I don't know. Maybe you guys are just a different breed. Okay, let's build the, this. I always forget when I do this, I can't see. Yeah, you know, let's just go come from this angle and make scenery invisible. There we go, much easier. Death is not allowed on this stream. Well, I just killed a whole lot of people. In a very sarcastic manner. <laughs> uh, can you make an air powered coaster? No, I don't have it available. Yeah, for anyone who didn't get that, by the way, uh, that was a joke. Me killing people. Well, I talked about killing people. It's not okay. Castle Tower is in the way. Hang on. Oh, I accidentally selected the guest. Um, bam. Now it's not. Now it's not in the way anymore. I'd probably hunt virtually without much issue. Would be a much bigger deal for me in real life. Yeah, for me as well. I I don't think I've ever... I've shot like an air, an air rifle. But not at... Well, at something. But not at a living thing. Wouldn't it be funny if some could swim and then become vandals? <laughs> God has tried to drown me. I shall destroy all the benches. <laughs> Imagine that. That would be awesome. You just heard that. Just randomly. I shall destroy all the benches.
Alright, I think the park looks pretty finished. I have a hard time finding space for new rides. So. No, this is not what I want. No, I need to go to options. Uh, we'll enable early scenario completion. That's how we do this. Come on, the end of the day. Perfect. Enter name in scenario chart. This way I can just play until either the park is full or I'm tired or I'm bored I suppose. Um, and then we can complete it whenever we want. Are we raiding now? Yeah, I'm gonna have to see who I can raid. Maybe Snappy? I'm not sure if he streams on Wednesdays. There go all the balloons. We have three different flavors. Blue, orange, and dark pink. Or just purple, I suppose. I think we built a nice park here. What are the stats of this one, actually? 674. Only 754 intensity. I would have thought it was higher, but apparently not. Oh, it's one meter too long. This is 1338 meters. It's almost lead meters long. Oh, Snappy is streaming. It's her birthday. Nice. Then I know who we're gonna raid. Everyone say happy birthday um, to Snappy. Even if you're trolling and it's not her birthday, it'll still be funny <laughs> when we raid her. Um, so thank you very much for watching. We had some interesting conversations. And we built a nice park. Maybe next time we'll continue with the dangerously dense diamond heights. Uh, let's see. Twitch. Yeah, do. Snappy Pickles. Come on, Twitch. Stop being slow. Twitch is being very slow at the moment. I need to copy her name so that I can... Oh, it doesn't have any weird punctuation, so I could have just typed it. Well, anyway. Uh, wish her happy birthday when we raid her. And in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. And uh, hope you enjoyed the live stream. And I'll see you next time. I hope you enjoyed tomorrow's video as well. Bye bye. Good night. Drive safe. <laughs>